All right, welcome back everyone. My name is Pratesh here with Kaizen Crypto, bringing you another video. So I hope you guys are all doing well. Thank you all so much for joining me here today in this video, talking about elections. So today is election day here in the United States, Donald Trump versus Joe Biden. As far as voting, how will Cardano be able to provide value to the current voting system for future elections using this decentralized blockchain technology. Taking a look at that here in this video, also bringing new value and utility to the Cardano blockchain. Now with Gogan full steam ahead, adding metadata behind a transaction, essentially being able to tell a story behind the transaction between two people. So very interesting to read about this, sharing with you all some highlights from this article from Alan McSherry of IOHK. We're also gonna be taking a look at the latest SPACRA proposal in response to the Daedalus 2.4.0 update. We've got the GitHub repository pulled up with some feedback given by the community. We can see that developers working on the Daedalus wallet have taken some of that into consideration, giving you all some of my thoughts on what we're looking at here in their GitHub repo. And last up, if you all stay till the very end, some of my thoughts on the price chart for ADA USD, where we are now and where we could potentially be heading in the very near future. So if you guys are interested in that type of content, be sure to stay tuned. All right, everyone, so to get things started, future elections could be held on the Cardano blockchain. So Charles Hoskinson actually tweeted at Donald Trump stating that Cardano could actually help to facilitate some of the issues that we're seeing right now with the current voting system. There are a lot of issues as it comes to generating ballots. I know just from seeing in past elections, we saw that votes were casted from people who were deceased or you had votes in the name of people who were not U.S. citizens. So there are a lot of different flaws that we're seeing with the current voting system as it comes to the legitimacy of some of these results. Now, with blockchain technology, being that blockchain is an, an immutable ledger, I think that is going to be a real use case for cryptocurrencies, especially Cardano, should they be able to do this correctly. And what we're seeing right now with the Voltaire era, this is the governance era for Cardano. This is the first step for us as a community and a project to be able to actually see something like this happen on a larger scale. So Hoskinson acknowledged that the road to Cardano-based elections would be gradual and require a number of experiments. So he suggested that it could start with third parties using the network for their primaries. So maybe not so much as a national election for presidency as we're seeing currently today, but maybe going to the municipal and state elections. So starting small and then working your way upwards over time. So he thinks that it's entirely possible within three to five years that we can take the test back and sell it to the government of Ethiopia, for example, or the government of Georgia. And they're in the business of looking for new voting systems because they're having so much problems with consensus and registration and fresh and free elections. So as far as being able to tackle this issue, as far as these developing economies, we do know that they've got a memorandum of understanding with the country of Georgia. They're doing quite a bit of things with Africa as well. So the countries that don't necessarily have this voting infrastructure is going to be a prime candidate for testing something like this. So he went on to say that if you're just doing a general election where you don't care about privacy, you're counting votes, you can do a billion people. When you want an election where I can verify it, but I can't prove to an outside party that's who I voted for, but at least I know my vote is counted and I want my privacy and I want my paper ballot backup, then that's when you get into a situation where you go from billions to thousands and you've got to shard it. So he's essentially talking about being able to scale this type of infrastructure. So with voting, of course, we know that voting on the blockchain is going to require a lot of throughput. So it's going to be interesting to see the amount of upgrades that are going to happen to the network in order to facilitate something like this. But I think over time, blockchain technology is going to be a big disruptor for the current voting system. Next up, bringing new value and utility to the Cardano blockchain. So this is an article written by Alan McSherry of IOHK. So he went on to talk about adding metadata to the blockchain. Now, this is going to be one of the first phases being implemented in regards to the rollout of Gogan. So metadata essentially refers to data about data. So it provides the context behind a transaction. 
as far as being able to send and receive money, that's exactly what we see with something like Bitcoin, where you're essentially providing value to another party. But the interesting things that starts to happen, especially now that we are introducing smart contract, is going to be the terms and conditions being submitted behind that transaction. So metadata can tell the story of the product purchase reflecting its buyer and seller, the time of the deal, the product manufacturer, or the supply conditions. All of these records are important to maintain along with the transaction of wealth. Exactly. So there is going to be a story tied behind these transactions. And this is going to be one of the first steps to be able to implement Gogan. In regards to earlier blockchains, he stated that they could support about 40 to 80 bytes of metadata. Cardano's transaction size is currently around 16 kilobytes. Subtracting the size of the rest of the transaction, including UTXOs, inputs, and outputs, still leaves the majority of the 16 kilobytes for metadata. So this brings up an interesting question. I think that as we start to see more data being tied behind a transaction, I think this is going to really tie into the scalability aspect of this blockchain. I know there is the Hydra protocol, which is going to be a scaling solution that's going to bring up the transactions per second by the network. So that's really going to help out in facilitating these transactions as there's more activity happening. It's going to be very interesting to see the activity on the blockchain as time goes on. So why does transaction metadata matter? So metadata is a handy way of certification and validation. It allows cryptocurrency assets to hold historical ownership, transfer, or value details. This is highly beneficial when working with non-fungible tokens representing values such as property or intellectual rights. Additionally, a range of documents can be signed and certified using a public key that proves the document's legitimacy. So in this article, they went on to talk about how in the future with Cardano, you're actually going to be able to store things like medical records. Or let's say if you graduated from a university, you're actually going to be able to have your degree or certificate of completion on the blockchain. So this is going to provide even more value to this cryptocurrency. Another use case is going to be supply chain. So supply chain involves parties such as factories, customers, suppliers. To enable efficient data tracking, participants must provide confirmation of services that are interlinked, and these must be accessible by everyone for verification. So in this instance, metadata can provide a complete picture of the supply chain process with fixed record data on the blockchain ledger. So there's lots of value propositions behind implementing this. So this is one of the first steps needed in order to see Gogan. Another project that was referenced in this article is Cardano's identity solution. So Atala Prism is a decentralized identity system that enables people to own their personal data and interact with organizations seamlessly, privately, and securely. The Atala Prism team is integrating metadata to certify and store decentralized IDs and decentralized ID documents on Cardano. Also, it will be possible not only to create, but also to revoke credentials such as university certificates. Very interesting. So this is pretty cool to see that there's going to be a story tied behind all of these transactions now that we are going to implement smart contracts on the blockchain. Next up, taking a look at what we're seeing with the rankings in Daedalus. So version 2.4.0 was the latest version release of the Daedalus wallet, and it got quite a bit of controversy in regards to the rankings for some of these stake pools. So what we're looking at here, this is actually the GitHub repo from IOHK, and uh, this latest iteration is pretty much just an update in regards to the stake pool ranking logic. So as far as what they have here, they're saying that stake pools with the potential rewards estimated at zero have the same ranking. It's saying, please set the stake slider at the top of the wallet to a higher value for more pools to get potential rewards. So the slider being referenced is going to be at the top of the wallet where you can adjust the amount of ADA that you're intending on delegating. So what they have here, this is just a screenshot to show you an example. So as we can see, after we get to a certain point, I believe 229 is the last one. Everything else is ranked at 230. Now with these ranked pools, it's not going to affect rewards necessarily. So if this stake pool, let's say you delegate to one of these pools, if they are online, if they're minting blocks, it's not going to necessarily affect their rewards being that they are ranked here at the lower level within Daedalus. So I think it's a step in the right direction. Still a little bit funny how they've got it laid out. I mean, for me personally, I think that it doesn't really provide a whole lot of extra information to delegators. You know, just looking at all these other stake pools ranked at 230, in my opinion, just from a visual standpoint, it, it makes me think that 
you know, these are almost like the same as in regards to rewards. So it would probably be a little bit confusing to the delegator who's looking at these pools ranked all at 230, trying to choose and tell the difference between which one to delegate to. So those are just some of my thoughts. Let me know what you guys think. I would love to hear from you. Let me know down in the comment section. Now, if you are a stake pool operator and if you're interested in providing your thoughts and feedback in regards to what we can do to improve this, there is a SPACRA ballot. Now you're able to vote on chain. So this is incredible as we're talking about voting in today's episode. Now with Cardano, the Voltaire era is pretty much in full swing. We've got things like Project Catalyst, which has become the largest DAO in the world. We've got voting on chain with things like this. Spakra has been doing an incredible job, so thank you to all of the board members at Spakra for putting this together. As far as being able to help promote decentralization and support members in the community, I wanted to give a big shout out to Vince Pool. So Vince Pool is a Cardano stake pool that has been running since the incentivized testnet. They have just recently got the delegation boost from the Cardano Foundation. Since this, they've been minting blocks like crazy. So it's incredible to see the progress they are making. We can see here they're doing incredibly well. So I'm very excited to share this with you. Be sure if you are looking for a reliable stake pool, go ahead and check out Vince Pool. I will leave all the links for you all down in the description. You can check out their website. You can see that it's run by IT experts. They are dedicated to the Cardano project. So if you are looking for a stake pool to help support within this ecosystem, be sure to check out Vince Pool. And last up, if you all stayed till the very end, thank you all so much for watching. I really do appreciate all of the support. For those of you guys who have stuck with us till the very end of the video, please be sure to drop a like for me. It definitely does help support the channel. I did wanna go ahead and provide a brief update regarding Kaizen stake pool before we take a look at the price here. So recently we had a bit of technical difficulties in regards to our internet connection. So it was a matter of being able to stay online and we were having some issues with being connected to the network. We are committed to the growth and success of this community and I wanna be as transparent with you all as possible. So as far as what we are doing moving forward, Kaizen Stake Pool is now not only going to be running as a bare metal server to help promote decentralization, but we are also going to be running backups on a tier four data center cloud infrastructure. So we are really, really taking this seriously. This is a challenge and a learning opportunity for everybody here at Kaizen Crypto. For all of our delegators, thank you all so much for staying with us. I was keeping everybody updated within our Telegram support group, and there was tons of support within that chat. I want to say thank you all so much for your support and for the stake pool operator that helped us to get back on our feet. I owe you a incredible debt of gratitude. So anything that you need, please be sure to reach out. I will be happy to help. I will be sure to provide another update video talking more about the progress being made for this. So taking a look at the price, so ADA USD hovering right around this nine cent level. What I really like to see from looking at this chart is we are currently here at some previous support. It's nice to see this hammer candle where we're getting quite a big wick here. So what that tells me is that we have buyers stepping in at this level right around this nine cent level. Nice to see that we are still on track for uh, what would seem to be a higher low. Of course, we have a low here, but we are at support. So where we could potentially go from here, it's anybody's guess. I think a lot of the things that are happening with the markets are going to be affected by the election and what happens right now on a global macro standpoint. But right now, ADA USD hovering right at around that nine cent level, could go up, could go down. This is not financial advice, but what I could anticipate us to see if we do break to the upside, we do have resistance right at around that 11 cent level. And if we do break to the downside, next support is definitely gonna be right around that eight to seven and a half cent level. So guys, those are some price levels that we're looking at here for the ADA USD chart. Gonna be very interesting to see the results of the US election today. I hope everyone stays safe wherever you are. So guys, that is what I have for you all here today. If you guys did enjoy this video here today, please be sure to drop a like for me before you go. And I will see you all in the next video. Take care.